think for a moment about a word that you use from time to time. The root word is called mood. Do you ever find yourself saying, I'm in a good mood or I'm in a bad mood or my mood is light or my mood is heavy? Can you feel that this is a word that you have learned to use to identify your vibrational output? So what we want you to hear in more clear terms is that the universe has never ever not one time responded to your verbal statement. It is instead always responding to your mood. It's responding to your vibration. Have you heard it said the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? What do you think is the mood of the rich? <laughs> Have you heard it say, the better it gets, the better it gets, or the worse it gets, the worse it gets? Can you feel how it is responding to the mood? So what do you do if, by virtue of banging around and observing some situation, you've brought yourself to a bad mood, to a mood that matches what you're observing? Does that mean you are stuck there forevermore? No. But for most, you will stay there a while. You will stay there until you have utilized the contrast enough to initiate a desire that is so strong that the desire overtakes the belief and the mood shifts. There is a faster way of going about it, and that is to deliberately offer your mood. We call it setting your own tone. Recently, Jerry and Esther asked a very powerful question. They said, Abraham, often someone will come to us wanting us to participate with them in some way. Often they want to help us in our work. They want to make a movie out of one of the books or they want to uh, participate with us in some way relative to our Abraham work. And we will say to them, give us more information. And so they bring more information and then when we've received enough information to realize that it's not really a vibrational match for us, when we say, well, this is not a match for us, then they're mad at us. <laughs> Esther said, I want more than I've ever wanted it before, maybe in a new way altogether. I want to be able to sniff things out in the very early stages so that I don't get myself committed in any way so that I don't make someone mad or even disappoint them. How can I keep from stringing people along? How can I keep from going along with something that ultimately is not going to turn out the way I want it to? And we said, most of you have been playing a record in your mind that goes something like, I don't want to miss opportunities or I want to be of value to others or I don't want my ship to come in and me not to be at the dock. And so from this place of being afraid that you'll miss something or from this place of wanting to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, sometimes you walk right into things that if you were paying attention vibrationally, you would know right from the beginning that it wasn't what you are wanting. In fact, it is fair for us to say that in most cases your initial knee-jerk response to something was a pretty good indicator of how it was going to turn out later. And the things that give you, most of you, the most grief are those things that initially you had a response about and you knew how you felt, but then you talked yourself out of it for one reason or another. So we said to Esther, the way that you get what you are wanting, which her desire was to be able to sniff things out earlier so that she could tell when she walks into a restaurant or even before she arrives at a restaurant if it's going to be a vibrational match to her desire or when she co-creates with another whether it's going to be an experience of co-creation that is going to be uplifting and a benefit to both. We said the way you know that is by remembering something that happened that way. Something that right from the beginning it felt good, it felt good every step along the way and it turned out magnificently. We said, can you remember things like that happening to you? And Esther said, twice. <laughs> there are two things that come to mind, very big and bold, that I can remember that happened that way. And we said, then just ask yourself, whenever you are in the place of making a decision about anything, does this feel like that? 
Does this feel like that? Esther said, but what if that was a big thing and this is a little thing? And we said, makes no difference. In other words, whether it is a castle or a button, if it is a match, it always feels like that. Sort through your own experience and see if you have not taught yourself the same thing. Have you ever had a strong feeling about something and went ahead anyway and not later understood what the strong feeling was about? You have guidance within you that lets you know how you're doing. And so what we are getting at here is we want you to begin to watch for vibrational matches. But before you can know if you have a vibrational match, you have to decide what it is you are wanting to match to. And many of you do not have some ready, accessible, success vibration ready to just reach out and feel for. Some of them you have to dig up again. In other words, when you have a desire that you don't believe, that desire in time becomes uncomfortable because there is a separation in the energy. If you want something that you don't believe, it feels uncomfortable. And there are only two ways of bringing yourself to comfort. You've either got to lower the desire so that it matches your belief or you've got to raise your belief until it matches your desire. Jerry said to us, that's what we have been doing. We have a desire, someone wants to work with us, and even though our vibration tells us we don't have a match here, because we don't want to disappoint them, we just release our desire until it comes into vibrational match. And then we bang around in mediocrity together. As you release your desire, what happens is you lose sight of your benchmarks. In other words, you, you, you lose sight of what it feels like, the most successful, outrageously wonderful things. You, you, you lose sight of them. In other words, you have to reflect. Can you remember wonderful things that have happened? Have you had experiences where as they began, they felt good, and as they unfolded, they felt good, and as they culminated, they felt good? Can you not find those, even if you have to go back to high school or grade school or preschool, even if you never went to school, can, can, can you not find those things that you reflect on and when you do, they feel good to you? Well, we want you to dig those up again. We want you to start feeling for those. We want you to find those feeling places and practice the feeling within them. Replay them in your mind. I remember what it felt like when so-and-so said such and such to me. I remember what it felt like when I saw that or when I did this or when I wanted that and when I got that. I remember that sweet taste of desire. Do you remember wanting something? and not hurting over it at the same time? Do you remember how good it felt to find something to want? Do you, can you go back that far in your memory that you can remember when you desired, desired purely without that awful disbelief that you couldn't have it? We want you to start digging up some of those success stories and reclaim the vibration of them so that you can use them as benchmarks to help you recognize the mood or vibration or point of attraction that you stand in at any point of time. Getting the sense of this? <laughs>